a couple problems here because if Allah is God, first of all, he asks these beings what would they want to do. When you read the Bible, God didn't do that. He spoke it into existence. But Muslims say that God does not have a spirit. He's not a spirit. So how is he communicating? How did he communicate? No, I did. Oh, no, I know this one. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I have a guest today. His name is Jacob. His channel is The False Prophet. It's quite easy to find, unlike mine. Um, you can go ahead and go over there and have a look. Uh, the thing that we're going to be discussing today is uh, Islamic polemicism. Um, so before we get into uh, Surah 4111 and how uh, Jacob's going to explain how that debunks Islam in effect, um, we're just going to ask a couple of questions. So, uh, Jacob, thanks for coming on. And how did you, how did your interest in Islam arise? Like, do you have a background with Islam? Well, how my interest came about for Islam is basically it's connected to the type of person I am. I'm a, I'm the type of person who I have an investigative mind. So anything that's that's like an on the edge topic dealing with like sci-fi type information, anything talking about evolution, the creation of the universe, anything that's based upon like metaphysics, religion, those type of things interest me. So basically because of my natural uh, demeanor about things, when I was on the internet looking up other things, it just so happened, I saw a uh, few videos about Islam debates coming up my timeline. Mm -hmm. And I started, you know, getting interested in it. But even before the like advent of YouTube and everything, I had already purchased a book about um, the origins of Islam. So my interest level was already there, but the internet and the debates and everything, it just took it to the next level. Great. And um, do you have a faith of your own? Uh, yes, I follow the uh, Judeo-Christianity uh, religion. That's my background. Yep, great. All right, then, so we may as well just jump straight into it. Um, at some point, I'm going to share my screen uh, to facilitate like what you're chatting about. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it, but for sure, the people watching the video will be able to see it, she said confidently. So um, you just let me know when you want me to uh, pop the Hadith or the Surah onto the screen and we'll just go from there. So um, I'm going to let you speak now. So Surah um, 4111 uh, and how it debunks Islam. So I'm going to share my screen because I assume you're going to you're going to go to this uh, verse first. Surah 4111. Is my face showing on the screen now? Yeah, yeah. I can see you in a, like a small mm -hmm. section. Yeah. Okay. okay. Surah 4111 and we're reading the Sahih International version okay and it says then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke and said to it and to the earth come into being willingly or by compulsion they said we have come willingly now this one verse totally destroys islam i have a video on my channel where well, I already discussed this, but I'm presenting it now to a wider audience. Now, it's a couple of problems within this passage. Now, the first thing Muslims say, they tell you that there is nothing like Allah, nothing can compare to him, and that he exists outside of time and space, and that before anything um, was created, only Allah existed by himself and in and of himself. Yeah. But this verse disproves that, okay? Now, notice what it says. It says, then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke and said to it and to the earth, come into being. Now, when it's talking about the earth right here, it's talking about the formless earth. Right. When the earth, was without form, without shape, okay? And the smoke is 
the heavens, right? Mm -hmm. So in this verse, you have Allah speaking to beings. Notice I said he is speaking to beings, mm -hmm. just like himself. And how do we know that he is speaking to beings? Because he asked them a question. He said, come willingly or by compulsion. Mm -hmm. Now, these are soul beings that have existed alongside Allah for all eternity. How do I know this? Because this is before creation. Right. This, is, this story is talking about the formation of everything, the mm -hmm. heavens and the earth. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... Allah is speaking to soul beings. Now, how do we know that this formless earth and smoke has a soul? Okay, you know why? Because Allah asks, come willingly or by compulsion. The fact that he did that, that's laying out a moral decision because obedience is something that's understood by beings that have a soul. Right. Decision making is something that's only understood by something that has a soul. Like if God says, like God says in the Bible, I put before you life and death. Choose you this day whom you will serve. So you have Allah speaking to the um, smoke and earth saying, will you come willingly or by compulsion? So these are not inanimate states of being that he is speaking to. Because an inanimate state of being, you wouldn't ask it a question like that. But it gets better. For sure, it wouldn't answer you. <laughs> it wouldn't answer you, okay? Mm -hmm. But it gets better, all right? They said, when you use the word they, that's a plural, uh, it's like a plural noun or a pronoun, right? Yeah. It's like a plural form of a pronoun, they. Yeah. So when you say they, and then behind the they, you, you have the word said. You have just proven that you are talking to beings because you're using the word they. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's a pronoun, a plural yeah. pronoun. They said, they made a decision. They had a conscience to choose mm. right from wrong. Yeah. So that means they had a soul. They got a soul in them, right? Yeah. Because he gave them the choice. They've got he punishment. gave them the choice. He gave them the choice to come willingly or by compulsion. Mm. Okay. They said, we have come willingly. Okay. So they decided to come willingly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've not heard this, this before. Yeah. How was this damaging to Islam? Because Muslims talk about the Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. They say that Allah is the father to no one. He begets because not. He doesn't have a girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, it he, he, yeah, he says he begets not, nor is he begotten, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If that's the case, if he is the father to no one, he begets not, neither is he is begotten, then who is the father? or mother of these two soul beings. Yeah. Yeah, it's about you get it. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do actually, yeah. So, so, that, so this in itself has created a trinity that Muslims will reject when Christians, you know, we believe in a trinity. They will reject the trinity, mm. but in their own Quran, in Surah 4111, you have a trinity because you have beings that don't have a beginning yeah nowhere in this in this reference does it say allah created the smoke and allah created the formless earth it doesn't say that no. so these two beings they always existed and this is outside of time and space how do we know it's outside of time and space because this was before the creation of the sun this was before the creation of the moon. This was before the creation of gravity. None of that existed yet. Yeah. And in the Quran, 
just to check a reference, doesn't it speak about the um the moon and the sun was set in place to keep time? Does it say something think, like that? I think so. I can check that in a minute for you if you'd like. Yeah, but yeah, but anyway, this is before um time and space because there is no sun, there is no, there can be no yeah, there can be no day and night if there's no sun and moon. Right, so. right. There's no sun and moon. This is outside of time and space. Um, and it says that Allah directed himself to the heaven. Okay? That's another problem. If he directed himself, you know what I mean? And this is a false translation. It says in Arabic that he turned. Right. See, the Sahi international people, they very deceitful. I have seen plenty verses where they twerk the verse when they translate it into English because they realize that if we put it out like this, it's a contradiction and somebody's going to catch it. Yeah. Like me, myself. So what they do, they doctor the scriptures. They doctor their verses because in Islam, they are betting on you being ignorant. So the more ignorant you are, the better chance they have keeping their life afloat. So that's why they, they dump the verses and they do things like this, okay? Now, another problem we have, now, they say Allah is everywhere all at once. If he's everywhere all at once, why would he have to direct his attention somewhere? Can or I look towards can, something? Because check, if can you I do just, a, can I just point yeah, yeah. out another yeah, yeah. contradiction? Yeah. It also says that he is always above his throne. So he's everywhere at once, but he's also mm -hmm. always on his throne. And yet he comes down to the lowest heaven to hear the prayers of the believers. So at right. any one time, like, and it's always, um, he comes down in the evening time to hear the prayers, but obviously throughout the world, it's always evening somewhere. So, which means he would be literally, you know, up and down like a, well, I don't want to say, but up and down a lot. Yeah, so. Because of the time zones, yeah. Yeah. But right here, okay, it says that he directed himself. Okay, this is, this, this is the formula of God. Omniscient, yeah. omnipresent, mm -hmm. and omnipotent. Omnipotent <laughs> means all powerful. Mm -hmm. Omnipresent mean the ability to be everywhere at once mm -hmm. and omniscient it means all wise yeah well if he is om om omnipresent he wouldn't have to direct himself his attention anywhere because it will already be there and we don't even have the problem of currently muslims say he doesn't enter creation but as you've just discussed creation hasn't happened yet so he would literally have been yet. everywhere yeah Right. Here's another thing, Kay, I want to point out. Now, this is this is um, Allah's first time speaking the eternal Arabic, oh. the divine Arabic of the Quran mm -hmm. to these beings. Yeah. Because it's not recorded, it's not recorded anywhere else where Allah spoke to the smoke and the formless earth. Nowhere else. Am I wrong or right? Uh, yeah, it's quite early on. So if it's pre pre yeah. the earth, he had nobody to speak to because, as we know, there was no spirit and no sun, uh, as in right. like the Trinity to to commune with. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, because this is the first time he spoke to this smoke and a formless earth, and it responded, that means this smoke and formless earth. We already um, proved that it had a soul because it made a decision of based upon morals yeah. to obey or to disobey. Okay, it, so these beings, they understood obedience. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a couple problems here because if Allah is God, first of all, he asked these beings, what would they want to do? When you read the Bible, God didn't do that. He spoke it into existence. Yes. He said, let there be light. Yeah. He commanded the things to take place. He said, let the uh, 
Help me out, okay? The firmament let divide the, from the let earth. the earth and the the waters uh, be separate. He separated the sky, the heavens from the earth. He then separated the dry land from the from the water, the light from the darkness. Um, he said, "Let let there be light," literally, and there was. So all of his initial commands were, um, yeah, happen, and it happened Amen. basically. His word. So even the Bible shows that Yahweh, his word is powerful yes. it speaks things into existence yes but here and the muslims say only thing Allah has to say is be and, and, and that thing is yeah. you don't see that taking place right here and this is at the very beginning of everything we don't see Allah saying be no he's asking he's begging what have they decided he's threatening to be fair he's saying come or i'll make you come which is yeah, no choice at all really yeah he said willingly or by compulsion. Exactly. But they say there's no compulsion in religion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'll dispute that one. Yeah, and listen, so um, here's another thing. So Allah is asking, he's asking, giving them a choice to make. So he's not saying be. And the other thing is, these beings, how did they know the eternal speech of Allah. And this is the first time he ever spoke to them. Where did they go to school to learn the eternal speech of Allah? You know what that means? In Arabic, it, yeah. Yeah, how do they know what to respond and to say? You know what that means? It means these beings are all knowing. They have the ability, Muslims say that, they're, that Allah is unlike anything. But if that's the case, if Allah has, if one of his abilities is um, omniscience, which is all knowing, then you can't say that Allah is the only thing with some omniscience because these beings, they knew the eternal speech of Allah. You can't even say he's, this? yeah, you can't, from the Quran, you can't even say he's the only creator because he himself rather modestly says that he is the best of creators, showing that there are more, and Isa, Isa creates in the Quran by the permission. But just because you have permission doesn't mean you couldn't do it without permission. You're not drawing the power from somebody else, you're just saying, I'm allowed to do this now. So yeah. Right, and look, something else. He, he um, what's the last thing I said, okay? Uh, you were talking about the eternal language, the language that he commanded the earth and the smoke. So how did they know the language? Unless well, they'd been hanging they around for eternity and they'd kind of, he was muttering to himself maybe, or I don't know. Yeah, how did they know what to say in response mm. if they didn't have the type mm. of mind that Allah has? Because you got to look at it like this. If Allah is not like anything in creation, mm. that means he couldn't speak directly to these beings. Let me explain to you. Because I, I think very deep and sometimes I go deeper than what the average person is able to pick up. So I'm gonna slow it down, not being arrogant or anything. Now, when you have a phone device and somebody else have a phone device, in order for you to communicate with the next person, there has to be some type of transceiver in your phone device, a transceiver and or receiver in your phone device to make it compatible with the other person's phone device yeah. so you can speak to each other. You have to be on the same frequency. Yeah. So if there is nothing like unto Allah, that means he can't speak to anything. Because in order for communication to take place, you have to be on a frequency and there has to be something inside of the person that's communicating and to the, and inside of the person that's being communicated to that is common to both parties. The other, but, sorry, the other thing but, I'd add is just, just off the top of my head is that if there can be nothing like unto him, he wouldn't have, he shouldn't rather have created uh, humans who communicate by speech in Arabic 
because if that's his own holy you know language other than the fact that he gives each prophet to the nation in the tongue of their choice kind of thing just the that's knowledge of arabic the uh transmission of arabic the understanding of arabic when the earth and the smoke spoke back to him means that he is right like unto them yeah that's what i'm saying mm. there has to be something inside of each device using the phone example now mm. applying that phone example to beings that have souls mm. we communicate on frequency levels so if i don't have anything in me that's not inside of god then he can't communicate with me because there is no link and that's why islam that's another reason why islam don't make sense because they say that allah is not a spirit but we know that because we have a spirit inside of us because the bible tells us that we have the spirit of god in us because he breathed his spirit inside of us that's the that's the common shared thing we're inside made of man yeah we're made that his image god. that's it yeah we made his image so we our reflection of God, we have our spirits come from God. Muslims say that Allah is not a spirit. So if he is not a spirit, then what is the linkage that is allowing him to communicate with you? Because again, in every device, there has to be something compatible in one walkie-talkie in order to communicate with somebody else on another walkie-talkie. So you've yeah. got to have that, you got to be able to, to channel in on the same frequency. You got to have something in order to be able to communicate because yeah. you something can't communicate dad, with something that's not really, something else yeah, that, can't that, communicate. that just popped into my mind is a i think it's uh -huh. a hadith it could be a surah um it's talking about allah will come to them in a shape which they do not recognize speaking about muslims and they will seek refuge in allah from this um apparition because they don't recognize him. And then it goes on to describe, uh, it says, and then he will appear in a shape that they do recognize. And in order for them to recognize him, he has to be, firstly, he has to be in time and space. Secondly, he has to have an, a, a previously uh, exhibited shape. And um, one of the hadith goes on to, um, to describe the Dajjal, who is the Antichrist, and it tells us that he is hen toed and deep seated and he has one eye and reassuringly the verse then finishes with a but um if you're afraid know that your lord does not have one eye so we know that allah doesn't well we know that he's hen toed and deep seated strangely but we also know that he does not have one eye implying to me that he has two eyes and he's got this like not so nice visage and just that links with the language that we're speaking about here the fact that before time he had some companions whether they they were still sentient beings and um, with some sort of consciousness to be able to understand this command to come into being and to respond accordingly to make a decision confer amongst themselves between the smoke and the earth and then get back to Allah and let him know yeah all right then so all of that together to me doesn't suggest absolute holy uniqueness it yeah so sorry to just butt in but carry on oh no 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 so so making my point again um see the muslims they say that uh there's nothing like allah right so mm -hmm. i just got to drive this home it's like if i got an antenna right you got an antenna that's the common bond that we share for communication. Yes. Allah is not a spirit. That's what Muslims say. The Muslim say he has a spirit. So what is your spirit? And I'm, I'm bringing all this in together to relate it back to um, Surah 4111. Mm -hmm. What is the linkage that enables you to hear from Allah? Because if there is nothing like inside of you that's like inside of him communication is impossible christians don't have that problem because we share the spirit of god his spirit is inside of us that's Amen. the communication loop. Yep. that's the antenna 
that we have that our God has. That's the link. Our bond is the spirit that we have. Thank so you. that's the problem. And, and that's the problem that Muslims have. And for this verse, relating it, relating it back to Surah 4111, it proves that Allah is not the only eternal being. In another sense, proving that he is not the only thing that's like himself and there is nothing else like him. Because we have proven you have omniscient beings who understand the eternal speech of Allah. They didn't go to Arabic school like you have brought up. So how do they know this? And they have something inside of them that Allah has inside of him because if they didn't, like I just expect, explained, yeah, it's too late. Yeah. it wouldn't be possible. Mm -hmm. There would be no linkage. So Allah is speaking directly to them. So that means they have an outlet plug that's connected to Allah in order for him to be able to speak to him, to, to, to them. Because if they didn't, the Muslims got to ask themselves. If they didn't have a connection in them like what's inside of Allah, then what was linking them to be able to hear No, Allah? I got it. I got it. You know why I've got it? Because I've got the same kind. I've got ears and you've got a mouth. Exactly what you're yeah. discussing. They had something to be able to receive and transmit. And so did exactly. Allah. So there's a similarity right there. I'm going to stop sharing yeah. the screen for one minute. For every, just so we come back. Every being, for every being that communicates with each other, we, we, you got to have something that can receive frequencies and transmit frequencies inside of you with the person that's communicating with you in order for communication to take place. Mm -hmm. But Muslims say that God does not have a spirit. He's not a spirit. So how is he communicating? How did he communicate? No idea. To oh, no, I know this one. I know this one. He's communicate, he communicates through a book and through some dude who turns up and strangles people. Yeah. Oh, burning. Yeah, yeah. He does a few little. He, yeah. He seems to come in handy for Muhammad. I would say that. Like Aisha said, uh, she narrated. Um, I'm gonna get get the words wrong. I'm paraphrasing. She what basically said, "You're so lucky, Muhammad, because everything you do, Allah reveals a verse that says it's all right to do that." Like, she, uh, yeah, she was quite surprised at how favoured he was of God. Right. Mm -hmm. So don't they don't they say that? Um, Allah, he ordered Jibril to uh, transmit the Quran to Muhammad. But yeah. how did he even speak, how did he speak to Jibril to do that if there is nothing like mm -hmm. Allah inside of Jibril? So how did he communicate to Jibril? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? No, I already do. Yeah, it goes back to basic premises of technology, how all technology operates. Within all computer systems, there has to be a way that of correspondence for it to take place. But with this Allah, there is no connection whatsoever. So how is he even communicating? It's okay. I, I think I've driven at home enough. I had okay. to do that. I had to do that so people can really get it so they can understand. Because for any naysayer, for any Muslim who look at this and you a naysayer, you got to prove to us what is the linkage inside of you that connects to Allah for you to communicate with him. Because you told us he's not like anything. Okay? But anyway. Right. Hold so up. Now, I'm, wait up, Jacob. I'm going to pause this for two seconds because I think okay. that wraps up that section quite well. So give me a second.